What's up, everybody? How we doing today? You know what's interesting? And this is something that just hit me. I was talking to Catherine yesterday. And I didn't realize it because I forget about the beautiful things that happen in my life. But maybe right when I met her, it was maybe, I want to say, two and a half years ago. You know, we were on the phone. You know, I said, it's such a beautiful thing because I, it's been a few months and I haven't, like I get paid on Fridays for my Amazon business. And, a couple months went by and this was maybe two and a half three years ago and I realized that like I didn't it didn't matter you know I was no longer checking my bank account every single Friday to see you know that my paycheck went through and taking care of my bills and like so you know three years ago it hit me that like how grateful am i to be situated and it's not like i woke up one day situated like this i busted my ass to get to this level and i continue to grind it out day in and day out to remain at this level and continue to escalate in my goals and my achievements but like how cool is it that you're not waiting for friday to get paid like that's fucking cool who who right now and this this is no judgment here, but who right now is excited for Friday because they get their paycheck? Just put a yes in the comments here, you know, because I lived like that literally until I was 29 years old. Um, you know, my early 20s, I barely had a couple cents to rub together. I spent it all on drugs and alcohol. And then, you know, my mid 20s, I jumped from job to job to job. I couldn't find anything that I was truly dedicated to or that got me excited enough where I would jump out of bed in the morning and couldn't wait to be a part of it. You know, and now here I am eight, nine years later. Over time is like we forget that time takes time. We want everything instantly. I know for me, I want everything instantly. I make a change in my business, I wanna see the results immediately. You know, instead of pushing through and understanding that things don't happen instantaneously. And usually the things that happen instantaneously aren't worth keeping around. So it's like having those prolonged goals and continuing to follow through with those goals and make a commitment to be consistent is is the move but it's challenging because most people they want that instant gratification when that instant gratification doesn't come through it's like defeat instantly takes over their soul and their body and they become they become unmotivated to continue because they're not seeing the results that they expected to see and i can completely identify with that i was in the rat race for years for years and so back in what years? It's 2022, so 10 years ago, I was 25. Yeah, so about 10, nine, well, 10 years ago, I was homeless, right? I was living out of my car. Sebastian, once in a while, he'd let me sleep on his couch. My family didn't want anything to do with me. Um, and I was completely broken, you know, but I made a commitment one of those days about 10 years ago that that wasn't going to be me anymore. It couldn't be me. I felt miserable inside. I was broken spiritually bankrupt. There was no more room for me to go low. I could have kept digging and went lower, but I decided not to. And I made it a, a shift in my life. And that shift for me was I found a gentleman. His name was Rob. Still talk to him occasionally today. And Rob got me out of that rut. Rob, Rob, I met Rob at a networking event and Rob had what I wanted, right? He had a full-time job. He was gainfully employed. He had peace of mind. He had a car. Like all these small things that today sometimes we take for granted that I know I take for granted. Uh, but he had all these small things that attracted me to him, you know? And I walked up to him after the networking event was over and I said, hey, Rob, uh, you know, you're, my name's Eric and you don't know me and I don't know you, but something you shared at this networking event tonight hit me in a certain way. And I want a piece of what you have. Cause right now I'm absolutely broken. You know, I don't have a penny to my name. I don't have a driver's license. I don't have a car. I barely have a house to live in. Like, what did you do to get out of that situation? Because you just shared that you were in a similar situation to me a short five or six years ago. And now here you are with all of these things that I thought were impossible to attain and you have them. How did you get them? And he said, listen, Eric, this is what we're gonna do. And if you don't say yes to this, I can't help you, right? And he said, Eric, this is what we're gonna do. You're gonna call me every single day 
Rain, sun, snow, sleet, hail, good day, bad day, indifferent, family emergency, mother sick, you're in the hospital, it doesn't matter, you're gonna call me every single day. And I called Rob every single day for four or five years straight. Right, I might have missed a couple days here and there, but I was very consistent calling Rob every single day for four or five years straight. Rob also said, you're gonna meet with me in person once a week, right? And I made that commitment on the spot. I told Rob, yes. I said, yes, absolutely, Rob. If, that, if what you're telling me to do is going to get me from where I am to where I wanna be, then absolutely, I will do that, right? And I looked him dead in the eyes and I said, Rob, will this work? Can you promise me this will work? And he said, absolutely, Eric, I promise you this will work. It's worked for me, and it's worked for dozens and dozens and dozens of other people I've suggested it to. And I did exactly that. And don't get me wrong, some days I did not want to call Rob. And I tell him, I call him, I'll be like, Rob, I don't even want to be calling you right now. You know, but we built this friendship and this relationship over the course of those four to five years that was very fruitful. It's just, it's crazy how life passes us by so quickly. And a lot of us, especially myself, whenever I'm referencing this, I'm always considering my own past experiences. But myself, I tend to take things for granted very quickly. Like yesterday, I was in in New York City, and I saw some questions pop up. I'll get to those in a second. But yesterday, I was in New York City. I've grown up in New Jersey my entire life. I lived in Brooklyn for a little while. But for the most part, I've lived in New Jersey my entire life. New York City is in my backyard. It's one of the most sought after cities in the world. People come from all over the place to come to New York, right? But because it's in my backyard, I don't appreciate it for what it was or what it is and what it continues to be. You know, when I was a kid, 16, 17, I'd take New Jersey Transit, hop on the train, jump on the subway, spend, you know, a day, two, three days in the city enjoying myself, right? Because it was new, it was exciting. But then after years and years and years of doing that, it's like, ah, it's just the city, you know, friends invite me out. It's like, ah, I don't want to go to the city. You got to deal with the traffic and the tunnel and the, and the parking and like all this stuff when really it should be like, nah, let's do the city, you know? I'm grateful to have this giant city in my backyard, this giant concrete jungle that I can play in. You know, so yesterday we went to the city, me and my girl, and we, and we just walked around. We did our outdoor workout for 75 hard. We walked around downtown Manhattan. She's never been to the World Trade Center. Took her to the World Trade Center. Um, we got some food. We just explored and enjoyed life. But it's easy to forget that. It's easy to get caught up in the day-to-day. I see it happen all the time. I do it myself. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. You are not alone. If you are getting caught up in the day-to-day and forgetting to be grateful for the little things in life, you are not alone. I do that shit too. But the important part is recognizing when you're doing it and then turning it around, making that shift. Uh, Flippin' FBA asked me, what's my biggest bottleneck and how are you dealing with it? So our biggest bottleneck right now in our Amazon FBA wholesale business is space. I think I talked about this a little last night. I jumped on live for about 10 minutes last night, but our biggest bottleneck is space. And that's why I'm always encouraging, you know, newer sellers. And that's why I love when someone in our community and these sellers or I reaches out and they say, hey, Eric, I just got my first warehouse, you know, because it's like, yeah, like congratulations. That's where the growth's going to come from, you know? Our biggest bottleneck is growth. Right now we have about 18,000 square feet of warehouse, 2,000 square feet of office, and we need to triple it. Realistically, our goal, so our goal for the end of this year was 75 million on Amazon. We're probably gonna finish the year right around 61-ish, 62. Um, which is great because last year we did 50. So that's a, what, 18% increase? I'm pumped about that, right? Margins are up, everything's up. Margins up probably 25%, which is huge. Um, Revenue's up 18%, which is huge. And orders are pretty much the same. That means our cost of, or our average, our ASP, our average selling price went up, right? Which means less work for us. I'm happy about that. Two years ago, our average selling price was right around 20 bucks. Right now, it's right around 25.70. You know, so that's a good number. That's a 25% increase in selling price. That means we could essentially sell 25% less items and still make the same amount of money, which is amazing. Our margins are up. Gross margins are up. Net margins are up. All the, Everything's up for us, right? And everything's going to continue to be up because we're analyzing the data. And I think a lot of people fail to realize, like you, you start building a business, right, and it starts to grow and you think you you think you have it down pat. I take 
20 to 25 calls with Amazon sellers a week, right? To introduce them to eSellers or I, explain to them what's offered and then get them signed up. And most of the time what I hear, I meet a guy or a girl who's doing 40, 50, $60,000 a month on Amazon. And the first thing they say is, hey, Eric, I really don't think you're gonna be able to help me. I know the game. You know, I'm doing 50, 60, $70,000 a month on Amazon. I know the game, what can you teach me? You know, and it's that mindset that's going to prevent you from accelerating quicker than you could possibly accelerate without that mindset. Because that's what keeps you stagnant, thinking that you know it all. I've been in the game for 10 years, I don't know it all. That's why I go to so many industry events because I want to learn from people who know more than me. That's why I build great relationships with my vendors so they invite me to their warehouses and I'm able to see their processes and I'm able to implement their systems into my business. I'm always trying to grow. The name of the game for you should be always trying to grow. What else we got, Chia? First of all, welcome everybody. For anybody new here, my name's Eric Castellano. I'm just grateful you're here today. It's Carlos, what's up, brother? And if anybody wants to jump in here, just request. Anyway, yeah, 60 SKUs, you should have been done had a repricer, my friend. I don't know what you're waiting for. I always recommend having a repricer anywhere above five to seven SKUs you should have a repricer. You know, because you can get something dumb cheap, which I don't recommend for you, because I know you're kind of larger, larger seller out there, especially with 60 SKUs. For you, I'd recommend Go Aura. You know, but if you're brand new, I recommend something like Be Cool. And if you're more advanced, I'd recommend something like Seller Snap. And in our program, we got discount codes for all of those um, and videos explaining to you exactly how to use them. Vonda, what's up? I appreciate the comment before, it means a lot. You know, my community, so Vonda just commented something like we have the best community and like, the only reason our community is the best is because the people who, who are in the community. The, the people who are in the community make the community. Don't get me wrong, the value inside the community is second to none. Nobody talks about the shit we're talking about. And if they are talking about it, it's because they joined our community and then basically replicated the information and created their own community, which happens all the time. I saw an ad on TikTok the other day and I click on all the ads you know one thing Russell Brunson taught me was like buy everything you know learn their their customer travel experience learn the different parts of their funnel that they have so I bought this gentleman's uh, first free webinar with an upsell and all that and I'm watching the webinar and verbatim word for word it's everything I've been teaching for the past five years <laughs> You know, and I'm flattered in it to a sense, but then the other part of me is like, bro, come on, like, get, like, be you, you know, don't be me, be you, you know, but I, shit, I encourage it. I definitely encourage it. You know, you've got to make some cash for it. As long as you're doing it legitimately, I encourage it. You know, but I, I almost sent him a message to it. I was like, bro, I just watched your ad. I typed it up and then I didn't send him. I was like, bro, I just watched your ad. I feel like I wrote it. I feel like I wrote your webinar. You know, while I was watching it. Because verbatim, it's literally all the nuggets I've been given for four, five, six years. Everything. Verbatim. The trucks on the road. The, you'll get a 2% conversion rate with a 10% close rate. And like verbatim, everything that I say was in this guy's ad. And of course, he's part of our community. M Profit said, I'm just starting with my store. First goal, 6K per month. After month three, will those results 100K a year is the goal? Yeah, man, your goals aren't big enough, brother or lady. Your, your goals aren't big enough. Make them bigger. If you think you're going to do 100K first year, say you're going to do 250K. Right? Shoot for the moon. Fall amongst the stars. That's the name of the game. That's why I said this year we're going to do 75 million. Because if I hit 61, 62, I'm pumped about it. It's growth for me. So if your goal is 100K, up that goal. 2.5 exit. Say your goal is 250K. Right, because then when you hit 150K, you're not gonna surpass your original goal, you're gonna get close to your astronomical, most unrealistic goal. And that's the name of the game. Always set unrealistic goals. If you think you can achieve it, your goal's not big enough, your dreams aren't big enough. The power of consistency compounded and focus can give you in five years time is so underestimated. I agree, Sylvia, it's so underestimated. You know, James Clear said it in his book, Atomic Habits, but he talks about a 1% growth. You know, a 1% growth every single day. Most people try to shoot for massive growth, right? And I see it now that I'm doing 75 hard. You know, since I started 46 days ago, I'm, I'm down about 25 pounds. You know, but most importantly, I'm building muscle. Not only body muscle, but memory muscle, right? Through the reading and the commitments that I'm making. So I'm training my brain to become better, 
I'm getting better day by day by day. You know, and I'm not seeing the, I was, I just got out the shower this morning and I got, because for years I've been grinding it out. You know, first I was living out of my car and then I started working every day and I, my body, my fitness was never a priority for me. I always prioritized work. And that's why it makes sense that I chose something like 75 Heart because I either do it or I don't do it at all. I either go all fucking in or I don't commit. So when I committed to this, I was like, of course I picked something like this where it's like drastic as fuck and I got to do an outdoor workout, an indoor workout and read and then drink a gallon of water and take a photo. And like, so of course I picked something ridiculously out of the ordinary to do, you know, but I got out the shower this morning. I was like, babe, maybe I should get like some, some liposuction because I got this fat that I've been building up for like 10 years now and it's only it's been 46 days and a lot of it has disappeared but there's still like the the, just it's there you know and I'm like she's like Eric what are you talking about bro she's like you've been working out for 46 days like give it a year before you even say some dumb shit like that and uh and I just laughed it off and you know I still think about it but It's not something I'm going to go forward with right now. Maybe in the future, but like the goal here is to change my habits. Change your habits, you change your life. Anything is possible when you put your head down and commit. What's up, CJ? Going to the city next weekend. Cassandra is going to the city. Awesome. What do I need to put on the must-see and do list? Uh, You definitely want to check out the High Line. It's a nice little converted old subway line that is now like a community park. So it's elevated above. Um, the ground, it's, it's super cool. You definitely want to walk across the, the uh, Brooklyn Bridge. Brooklyn Bridge, um, the guy who created the Brooklyn Bridge actually died of the bends from going underwater and uh, too much oxygen in his blood, I think the bends is. And what a really cool story is his wife, so they had um, one of the high rises in downtown Manhattan. He had the bend so he couldn't get out of bed. And his wife, uh, another strong powerhouse woman, right, like yourself, Cassandra, she um finished the design of the brooklyn bridge which is super impressive right she had the blueprints would stand on the balcony every morning tend to her husband and she finished the brooklyn bridge um obviously you got to check out central park go see a show on broadway my mother's been telling me to go see uh, phantom of the opera or lion king one of these broadway shows for years i'm not a big broadway guy I've never been a big, big musical guy i've been to some musicals in the past it's just not my thing it doesn't tickle my fancy i appreciate a good vegas show uh, but that's some stuff you definitely got to do. And also, you got to get a good slice of pizza, you know? Appreciate you, Chewy. The Zeus, thanks for the badge, brother. How's the inner circle work? How can we apply? So the inner circle, um, there's a few requirements. You got to be a seven-figure seller. Uh, the purpose of that is because I'm trying to elevate the people in there, right? And I don't need a, a five-figure seller in there asking fundamental, basic questions when they could join these sellers ride and do that. So you got to be... A seven-figure seller, you have to be a member of eSellers or I, and you have to be awesome. Those are the three requirements to be an inner circle, and it comes with um, live events, free trade show walkthroughs, walkie-talkie access to me and Sebastian. So there's an application called Voxer. Voxer is a walkie-talkie app. So you literally, you just pop in the walkie-talkie app, you chirp us, hey, E, I got a problem, how do I fix this? And boom, I get a notification, a couple minutes later I respond. This is how you're gonna fix this, you're gonna do this, 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 and this. And then obviously if you need more information, we can hop on a Zoom call and uh, settle that complication for you. That's the name of the game. We also, last night, once a month, we have live inner circle only mentoring calls. You know, so that's only for the 30 or 40 businesses that are inner circle. And the stuff that's discussed on those calls is much more higher level. It's next level. It's just way more advanced, right? It's the stuff that we don't talk about in these sellers or I. And if, and if you want to join um, inner circle, send me a DM and I'll send you a link to my calendar and we could jump on a phone call. I could learn more about where your business is, where you want to go. Um, and we could discuss, you know, the assets. And really at the end of the day, let's put it this way. If someone walked into your business right now and said, hey, uh, you know, I I see you're operating a $100,000 a month Amazon business or a $500,000 a month Amazon business and um, I'd like to be hired at your company. And you said, oh, interesting, come on in, sit down, let's talk, right? And you start asking them some questions. Well, what's your experience? And they say, oh, well, I've been selling on Amazon for 10 years. And uh, oh, okay, 
how much revenue do you do? Oh, I do about five and a half, six million dollars a month. Oh, wow, that, that's impressive, right? Do you have employees? Uh, tell me about your employees. Yeah, I, I manage about 48, 50 employees on a daily basis. Uh, 48 of them are in-house. We have another six or seven overseas, and I've been managing and training those teams for six or seven years. Um, you say, wow, that's, that's super impressive. How, how many orders do you ship a month? And uh, the person goes, you know, we ship about, I don't know, 300,000 orders a month. And you're like, wow, that is impressive. And then you go, well, what are you looking to get paid? And they say, uh, you know, $60,000 a year. You'd be like, what? Absolutely. You're part of the team. Can you start tomorrow? You wouldn't even think about it. It's not even a question in your mind. You would hire that employee on the spot. Same thing goes for Inner Circle, right? We offer the same exact services, except I don't need to be at your business 40 hours a week, right? My knowledge is way surpassed that, where the information I'll share, I had a call today or a boxer today with, with uh, Caleb, a member of the Inner Circle, and I gave him some nuggets, the aha moment. He had that aha moment. And I know in that moment, the tier that he joined at, whatever it was, forty, fifty thousand $50,000 for the annual membership, he got his value in that 45 second, 60 second Foxer clip. He got his value, right? I can guarantee you if I didn't talk to him for the rest of the year, he would feel satisfied with the $50,000 investment because he got all the information he needed. That one tweak that I elaborated on in that Foxer chat today that took me 60 seconds to deliver to him is going to change the whole game for him because it made the mental shift necessary to innovate his business to the level it needs to get at. And that's what it's all about for us. That's what it's all about because I'm part of some high level masterminds myself. I pay six figures a year to be part of high level masterminds. And I talked about this a little last night, but the first mastermind I ever joined, it was like, I think it was 50,000 and with travel, with travel and everything and events and food, it ended up being like 80K a year. And I had a phone call with the gentleman, Robbie. Um, and within the first 30 minutes, if Robbie hung up the phone call and I never talked to Robbie ever again, after that 30 minute phone call, I would have got my $50,000 worth. I would have got my $50,000 worth, without a doubt in my mind. He didn't have to provide me any more value because he's way far more advanced than me. He gave me the game plan, the framework that allowed me to 10X that investment in two and a half to three months, right? And that's what most people miss out on. They see it as an expense. It's not an expense, it's an investment. It's absolutely an investment. What will happen to the inventory from the ASINs being removed? So it'll go to unfulfillable. Armando's talking about the G10 issue that's popping up. It'll go to unfulfillable. You'll have to make a removal order unless you have, which I think is mandatory now. You got to have your removal settings set up to where it's like once a month or once every week or bi-weekly, whatever the removal um, requirements are nowadays. But also, I know the day, today was the day that they're supposed to remove a lot of listings. And lo and behold, like I said and been saying, they didn't remove a lot of the listings. Right, And on the next date, which I think is like the 20th or the 26th, they're probably not gonna remove a lot of the listings. Right, And then there's another date, I think on the 30th, and they're probably not gonna remove a lot of listings. So us personally, we're not making any moves until we figure out how Amazon's gonna navigate moving forward. I don't have any thoughts on the new Nike regulations. I've sold Nike in the past. I don't currently have any Nike in stock now. Um, it's gonna be very tough for Nike to navigate that. Right, tracking the supply chain of their inventory. It's been tough for them for decades. There's something called the Nike effect. And Nike, uh, the Nike effect, Sebastian breaks it down in our brand workshop very thoroughly, but I'll give you a little snippet of what the Nike effect is. So the Nike effect is, you know, a couple years ago, five, six years ago, a a Nike went on Amazon and they reached out to Amazon and they said, hey, like there's all these third party sellers selling our products and we're not getting the buy box. Like why, we are the brand, you know, we're not, we're not, dominating the sales for Nike. And Amazon went back to them and said, listen, we're a, we're a database data driven company, you know? So we're gonna give the buy box to the person who deserves the buy box, regardless of whether it's the company brand manufacturer on it, unless you wanna set up, to, uh, you know, transparency labels. Um, but other than that, like we are going to drive the buy box to the person who's gonna drive the most sales to our company. 
And, you know, Nike had nothing to say to that because there is nothing to say. And it's very similar to this situation right now. Yeah, Burns, man. I don't know if you're in East Sellers or I, but if you did 900K last week, you're right on the cusp of joining Inner Circle. And I'd love to have you in Inner Circle, set you up, help you find some of them killer suppliers, help you enhance your processes, especially if you have a warehouse. We'll literally fly out to you, organize your whole spot. And I guarantee you in 1.5 to 2 days, you'll be doubling, if not tripling, your production in your facility. You know, and a double or triple in, prediction, in production in your facility means a double or triple in your, in your business operations and your business revenue and your business profits. Uh, how do we go about finding trade shows? So I'll give you some game on some trade shows right now. Expo East, Expo West, ASD. We're, we're at all of them. I suggest you go to all of them as well. Um, also, uh, just Google trade shows. You know, also look into... Um, local uh, convention centers near you, especially if you're in a big metropolitan area. There's probably a massive convention center right by you. Just look at their schedule for the month, or the year, rather. Yeah, Inner Circle is definitely the goal, Bonda. I know you've been saying that since February back at ASD, and I know you're going to be in it. I know you are, because right? I just know the, the type of woman you are. You're a fucking hustler. Right, so you, you, you put something on your vision board, whether it's mentally or physically on a vision board, and you're gonna achieve that no matter what. The same way you're accountable to your actions and you showed up to Expo East, right? Same way you showed up to ASD. Same way, um, you know, after you didn't go to our event, you went to the next one, right? And speaking of events, the next event we're hosting, we might do a little uh, East Coast meetup in the interim, but the next big event we're hosting Amazon Lit BGHL will be at ASD in Las Vegas, um, probably, I want to say February 28th-ish, it's an estimate, uh, ASD is from the 26th to, February 26th to March 1st, so we'll be out there, we'll be hosting an event, and uh, it's going to be great, you know, we're going to get a, f a lot of phenomenal speakers in there to deliver you the information that you need to elevate this, you know, I want to get some real estate guys in there. I appreciate spending this last hour with all of you. I'm super grateful to be a part of your lives and glad that you're a part of mine. I wish you a beautiful and a happy and enjoyable rest of your Sunday evening. Have a beautiful rest of your day and stay lit. Adios, my friends.